year. Um, hopefully this is the day where things start settling in and it's real. This is, this is your crew up here. Um, yesterday we did a lot of big picture things. You got to know a little bit about the school and its history and where we're coming from and where we're, we're going to be heading in the future. Today we're going to start getting down to more of like the nitty gritty planning stuff. Um, I know I had some questions yesterday from people that were like, so when are we going to start? Um, today we're going to start. Uh, but before we dive in, we wanted to take a pause and do a little bit of a do now. Um, so what you're going to see on that front sheet is a graph. Do you want to just take a moment to take a look at it and then jot down a few sentences about what you think it's telling you? Is that too dark? Take a moment, turn to the person next to you and share what you see. Regardless of what kind of teacher they have. Okay. So you're going to teachers are an important factor for student achievement, but also that I was wondering what, how do you define the high performing, mm. what's, what's high performance, what's a high performing teacher, what's student performance, and how that's being measured, is that being measured only in exams, is that being measured in material covered? Pretty simple graph, right? <laughs> high performing, well, um, this is from one of the studies that you're going to, you're going to read inside the black box, um, and so, do you guys already read that one yet, or is that coming up in your homework? Coming up, so this is a graph, uh, hopefully that will be better explained about what measures they were using when they get there. Um, but what we're seeing here is, is basically it suggests that the better quality of the teacher, whatever they're measuring that by, the higher performing that the student is. Um, and here at Boston Collegiate, we 
really do believe that it is, without great teachers, nothing else matters, right? This is a pillar that we learned yesterday. And part of being a great teacher is making sure that you are effectively planning for your classes, and that's sort of what we're going to be going over today. One thing I would add to that, to if you uh, yes. go back, um, that maybe this is obvious to you guys, so you just didn't name it, is like, yes, if you have a higher performing teacher, you have higher performing students, but if you're a low performing teacher, your students regress. So they actually like, don't stay, <laughs> they don't like just plateau, you do damage uh, to them. So keep that in mind as we talk about today. <laughs> What's the phrase? Don't suck. You just don't yeah. suck. <laughs> don't I mean, suck. like we, we tried like many ways to like say it delicately, but like the reality is, just don't suck. Um, <laughs> so the ways in which we, as a you know administrative team, help you not suck is, um, you know, during this orientation and kind of grounding you in what we think is going to make you a higher performing teacher. So a um, couple of our beliefs up here: standards-based curriculum. Uh, promote student achievement. So, you know, we all have at this point, and maybe if you're a new teacher, you will develop it, but that like teacher gut, right? Like you go with your, you know, instinct or your intuition about what students need, and that's great. That's a part of the, the profession. Um, and many of you like found your calling in teaching because you have that great instinct, but that is not what you're going off of solely. Um, uh, you're all brilliant people, and we like totally suspect that about you. But um, it doesn't mean that like your opinion about what kids needs trumps like Common Core state standards. And I know like this, I'm sounding like a little bit obnoxious right now, but um, the reality is that happens all the time, right? You're like, no, but this is what I think is like really good for them, and it teaches them how to be a good writer, or like this is the content they need. Um, but like. That might be your opinion, and we value that, and like charters like give you that autonomy to an extent. But please also keep in mind that what should guide your work are the standards that these kids are going to be held accountable for. Um, one of the things I don't know if it's come up yet this week, but um, the beauty of being in a school where 100% of our students pass the MCAS in 10th grade is that we also get them money for college. So in Massachusetts, there's the, the John Adams Scholarship, where if you pass the MCAS, you get tuition dollars towards state school. Um, so when you're serving a low-income population, that is a huge factor in us being standards-based and driven, is like we need to make every possibility possible for kids. Um, so that's part of it. Something else you believe in is that backward planning is effective and critical. We like to think of June to August, we like to think of end of unit to beginning of unit. We like to think of end of class to beginning of class. Um, we think that that's sort of how you should be building your, your year. We also believe that this will help you with your work-life balance. Um, Maeve sat up here and said, get sleep now. Um, sure, yeah, do that. But you can also get sleep throughout the year. And one of the ways that um, we think that will help you do that is to be planned in advance. We don't want you here at 5.30 on a Tuesday night making your lesson plan for Wednesday. That's not a good use of your time. Um, we expect and hope that you'll be planned at least a week in advance at all times, and that really what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is taking the data that you have from your classrooms and tweaking. You're not overhauling, you're not changing, you're tweaking and helping bring in that data from Tuesday into how you present Wednesday's lesson or how you might change one activity or how might you might add one more question and spiral in a skill. Um, and then the third belief that we firmly stand behind is that skills-based instruction um, is important because although your content is rich and important and valuable, the reality is like kids aren't going to remember every name and date from your history class, but they will remember how to annotate a text so that they can read closely future historical documents, right? Like so um, keeping in mind that the content is incredibly important, but so are the skills, equally important um, to them. And often when you think with skills in mind, um, they access your content a lot uh, more deeply if you think about how they're getting there. So before we jump into the planning process, which is what uh, the steps that we'll outline for you today about how we do that here at Boston Collegiate, we'd like to know where each of you are coming from. So if you want to take a moment on that front sheet, maybe underneath the do now that you just completed, and just write down what is your current planning process? What do you do? When you sit down and want to plan for a week or for a unit or for the year, where do you start? What do you do? <laughs> 